Welcome to Celebrating Act 2's series on healthy masculinity uh, that we're doing with wonderful authors of Power Tools for Men, uh, a book that I suggest you all pick up and read, not only you, yeah. but your, and, it, and, it, and if your wife or your girlfriend is watching this, it's a secret on how to deal with us. <laughs> how to deal with us men. Mm. Ain't easy, is it? No. <laughs> uh, so it always reminds me of uh, Kermit the Frog. It ain't easy being green. Mm. And the fact of the matter is that in today's society, um, there's a whole trope of uh, the phrase toxic masculinity. Mm. And, ooh, that bothers me because what they're saying is men are bad and men are not bad. We know sometimes we're not the best. We have trouble with accessing and expressing our feelings, but masculinity is not toxic. Mm. And the authors of Power Tools for Men um, have really put that trope to bed, destroyed it with this book. They've really explained um, what they've done is created the concept that we need tools to help us be real men, to access our masculinity, to not be toxic, but to be healthy men, real men. And it's a wonderful book. And the reason Art and I wanted to do uh, this eight-part series is because we thought this book was important for society today, for men, certainly, uh, but also for women, anybody who loves men. Um, and so what we did is we asked the authors, Rick Bronick and Leonard Simchik, to do these sets of videos with us, each one specializing on one of the, quote, eight power tools, right? Um, I think they've got another name for them. But the point is these power tools are all wonderful things for every man who wants to be the best he can be. That's my opinion. So uh, we've we've invited them. This is what? Did you say, Art, this is number three? It's number three, the series? and there they are. And surprise, surprise, here's Leonard and Rick. Um, guys, I, I do you, you have another name for these tools? You don't call them power, I mean, the title says power tools for men, but you have another name for them. Well, they're, they're power tools, but we are we have um, eight dimensions. So based upon the classics model, the classics is an acronym, and uh, each of these um, are dimensions. But we have a lot of power tools to help expand and help us men become healthier. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, a great book, and of course, we're up to number three. Uh, under the acronym classic CLA, and you teased us in the last video. By the way, everybody should see all eight of these videos. Which will be, by the way, in a playlist on our YouTube channel, so uh, be yeah. sure to go there to see them all. Yeah, so you teased us with uh, authenticity. Uh, for me, authenticity is one of those, I don't know what you call it, psychobabble words. I'm not sure what it means. Well, I'm a lot more sure now that I read your book. But I want you to explain it to everybody. Authenticity. Yeah, thanks. That's And thanks for having us on the, the series of um, episodes on healthy masculinity. You know, authenticity, it, it's a big word, but, you know, uh, you know, going back to what you were saying, John, about men, you know, we're confused now. You know, we're taught to be strong, but also gentle. We're told to be protective but not over controlling. So what does it really mean to be authentic? Rick and I have been in a men's group, men's groups for over 35 years. We're both in a men's group. We, we met each other in a men's group here in California eight years ago. And in our men's group, we really encourage each other to be authentic. And so maybe I'm gonna to toss it to you, Rick. You know, when we talk about authenticity, um, what stops us as men from really being authentic? Uh, Leonard, I think the number one uh, thing that keeps us from being authentic is fear of being judged or hurt. So we put on this armor, the armor that we start very, very young, very early on in our lives. We're told to be tough, to be strong. Oh, you're not hurt. You know, be a man, that kind of thing. And we armor up. 
And, and we're terrified of being real, of letting people see that we're hurt or that we need love or that we need anything actually from anybody. So I believe that's why we do that. Yeah, you know, you know I, when I was growing up in Chicago, uh, my father left the family the first time when I was six and then the second time when I was nine. And I remembered I had to armor myself from feeling the pain and the fear. So uh, my father was could be a scary man. So I armored myself, says I don't want to be uh, feel all these horrible feelings about uh, fear and sadness and anger. So I just armored myself. But over time, I didn't realize the armor uh, created a sense of being numb. And if we armor ourselves too much, it's hard to really be in relationship to other people and to even know what's true for ourselves. So, uh, and I know growing up, uh, the armor kept me invisible. And I think as men, we're, we're, it's important for us to have places where we can take our armor off and be seen um, as real. Wouldn't you say that, Rick? Absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, from my childhood, I remember like it was yesterday. I was about eight or nine years old. My parents were separated again. They were separated seven times through my childhood. My mom was trying to raise, at the time there was four of us. Eventually we had, I'm the oldest of six kids. And she lost it one day. She just got really upset and she lined us up from me, I was about seven or eight, down to my youngest sister who was just like two years old. And she began to spank, more like beat us about something that was left on the floor. Who did that? Who left those socks on the floor? And she beat me, and then she beat my young, next younger brother, and then my next younger brother, and then my sister. And at that time, I realized she wasn't going to stop until somebody fessed up. So when she came back to me, I decided I was going to end this carnage. And I actually, I said, I did it, even though I didn't. But I said I did it uh, to stop it. And uh, she beat me again as punishment for lying to her and then made me do their, all their chores for the whole next week. But it stopped what happened. And I know I, I, I immediately armored myself. I'm going to take the hits for people in my life. And I continued to do that for a very long time to my detriment, and actually to the detriment of, of the people in my life too, uh, until I started doing men's work and started peeling off that armor. Yeah, you know, and for us to really be authentic, we've come up with, uh, you know, one of the tools that we have on that authenticity uh, chapter is, is six building uh, tools to live more authentically. And the first one is notice our armor. And just like with you, Rick, uh, growing up, I didn't even know I had armor on. It wasn't until much later when I became a psychotherapist that I says, wow, I, my armor is my defenses. And I says, whoa, I, I've got a lot of defenses and armor here. And when I work with uh, with my clients, particularly the men, I'm says, look at, can you feel your, your armor uh, that stops others from really getting close to you? So often when we feel well armored, we may be more isolated and lonely. So the first key is to start noticing when we are armored and defensive. And once we do that, then we can go to the next step in the process. Yeah. And, and we also notice, Leonard, that the armor protects us from things coming out, but it also keeps us from feeling things and, and, and expressing ourselves. So the first, the next step in this process, we believe, is finding a safe place to begin to peel off your armor. Sometimes that can be in a relationship if you're lucky enough to have a partner who can be a gentle with us and, and hold space for us. But I found more powerfully to do it in a circle of men because other men could totally understand what I was going through, notice the difficulty I had in being real and peeling off my armor and make a, a witness me doing that and make a safe place for that to happen. So um, you, uh, you and I did an exercise once where, and I learned this from Robert Bly, one of the early progenitors of uh, men's work, we put a red ribbon around our bodies, every place where we had a wound and had armored around it. And uh, whether it was a physical wound or a psychological wound. And when we got done with that exercise, we were in a circle of probably eight men. We were all covered in a sea of red. And it was very moving to realize how deeply wounded we all were. And, and together, we were able to peel off those little wounds and the armor that came with them 
and to begin to be more real with each other. It was very powerful. And that brings us to the, the next step in the process. Yeah, you know, I, I recall that uh, <clears throat> exercise we did. And, you know, as men, we often don't share our wounds. You know, we keep our wounds, we keep our injuries, our hurts to ourselves. And boy, that, that takes a tremendous toll on us. You know, the next, the next step in this process of li trying to live authentically is to be accountable. And I remember working with an adolescent many years ago, and I says, what, what, what happens to you when you get in trouble? And he says, well, the first thing, if I get in trouble, I deny that I did it. And, and he says, well, if that doesn't work, what do you do? Then I, then I blame somebody else. Oh, and then, then what do you do? And then I try to get out of the consequences. And then only if those don't work, then okay, I got to face the music. And so for us to be accountable means, hmm, I take responsibility. If I screwed up, if I uh, said something that offended somebody or did something, I take responsibility for doing that because in taking responsibility, then I can clean it up. So, you know, as you know, Rick, we, we have this process. And so if uh, we hurt somebody, uh, the other person would say, ouch. And then, ooh, I can say, oops, ooh, I didn't mean to hurt you, but thanks for letting me know. So we get feedback, so it helps me be more accountable. And then once we become more accountable, it takes us to the next step in the process. Yeah, the next step, Leonard, is what we call shadow mining. It's becoming aware of all the parts of me that I have put back into shadow. I've hide, repress, and deny as a result of that armoring up. And shadow mining means literally digging down deep in the shadows and pulling up those parts of myself that I'm ashamed of, parts of myself that I lopped off when I was younger, parts of myself that I don't want to acknowledge, and including the dark stuff, you know? And sometimes it's the gold stuff. It's my brilliance and beauty that I put into shadow because I was told very early on, you know, when I was acting like I knew something, who do you think you are? You know, you think you're so special. And so I learned to squelch the beautiful parts of myself as well. So we have dark shadows, we have golden shadows, and it's been a lifetime work for me, and I know for you too, to uh, discover those shadows and reclaim those parts of myself that I lost, because that makes me a wholer human being and become what John mentioned in the intro, uh, a complete whole man. And that brings us to our next step. Yeah, you know, the next step in trying to be authentic is to welcome feedback. And a lot of times we don't know the impact of our behavior, so we're welcoming feedback. I belong to Toastmasters, been in Toastmasters for 15 years. And after we give a speech, we have someone do an evaluation. And the evaluation is to give us feedback on how we, how we did, you know, the things that worked and didn't work. Well, you know, it's important to have feedback from friends, loved ones, so that we welcome the feedback, huh, how, uh, did I do anything that upset you? Or what did I do that, uh, did, what did I do that upset you? You know, you're, we're welcoming feedback so we can improve ourselves, even be more authentic. So it's so important for us to welcome feedback. And when we do, we can move to the final step. Just being in integrity. One thing I want to say about feedback is I became aware, Leonard, and I know you've done this too, that my impact on other people is often very different than my intent. So being aware of intent versus impact has changed my life. It's really, really helped me up level my integrity. So being an integrity means two things. The definition of integrity is uh, in the dictionary is either living up to my agreements. If I say I'm going to do something, I do it. Or if something prevents me from doing it, I'm accountable about why I didn't do it. Okay. Or the second piece of integrity I think is equally important is I am in alignment that my thoughts, my words, my feelings, and my actions all align. So I say who I am and I am who I say. And when I do that, it creates a sense of integrity. It feels good to me. I know when I'm there and people trust me as a result. I also know when I'm not there. And I, I notice that people don't trust me at all when I'm out of integrity. I'd like to uh, finish up this segment with a quote from Dr. Brene Brown, who did a lifetime of work on uh, authenticity. She said, we can only belong when we offer our most authentic selves, when we're embraced for who we are. And we believe that's really true. And with that, we'd like to end this session and talk about our next one coming up, which is a, a dive into spirituality. Hmm.
Oh, you guys, a, lot, I, a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff today. Um, thank yeah. you. Well, I don't. Art, I'm not ready to say goodbye just I, yet. I got to interrupt. I I, I because, wasn't saying goodbye. I was waiting to to hand hand it over to you, John. So here. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate that. I just first I wanted to comment on the authenticity, um, because for me that it's always been a buzzword. But you guys have defined it in a way that makes me appreciate what I used to think of as a buzzword, and it's really the fact that we are all as men, actually all people I think, but certainly as men. We're happier when we are our real selves. We're more lovable and we're more loving when we are our real selves without all that armor that you described. So uh, this chapter was very enlightening to me. Hit, hit home. It was great. And I'm really looking forward to us talking about the next chapter. Um, but before we do, I wanted to ask you, I always love, at the end of the chapters, I love your list of stretches, exercises. We've we've gone through all these materials. You've given me a, a great lesson, and now you've given me some exercises to, to try out, try my new wings. Give me one of the exercises that's the end, end of the authenticity chapter. Well, I'll jump in. And, um, you know, this is one of my favorite, is that, we believe it's important to have accountability buddies. Mm -hmm. And so if I say, like I do this with Rick, Rick, uh, this week I'm going to do such and such. Let's say I want to make sure I exercise five days, a week, five days during this week. And so I have an accountability buddy. So this stretches, find an accountability buddy. And so I'll say, Rick, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to exercise five times during this week. And uh, uh, Rick might uh, text me, says, did you exercise today? He says, Ooh, no, I didn't. I better exercise, you know. So accountability buddies help us uh, be accountable and stay authentic to what we're saying. So the stretch is find an accountability buddy and work with an accountability buddy to help you be true to your word. Excellent idea. Great, great idea. Great idea. Um, uh, now, just for my edification, what's the next one? Uh, lesson four? Spiritual it's on spirituality. Spirituality. Uh, wow. All right. We're looking forward to that. Gentlemen, thank you again so much. Um, of course, I got to let everybody know that the book is available, um, I'm sure, on Amazon and everywhere else you can buy the books. But it's a great book for, certainly for men, but anybody who loves men should read this book. And... Um, uh, Again, as you can see by the exercises, it's more than just a great read. It's a workbook. So, guys, thank you so much for doing this. We'll see you again for the next episode. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.